I'm on the search for universal design principles and a universal design language, which I know sounds outrageous, but I think it is rooted in something bigger than any one individual's personal expression. So in 1977, George Nelson, who was the design director for Herman Miller for 30 years, wrote this book called How to See. His belief was that if the world could learn to see, it would be a happier place. And he did it really with a great sense of humor. So I'm going to read just one little paragraph here to you. He says, people who buy things make decisions on the basis of whether or not they like the design, since they rarely have any way of knowing how well the product will work after they get it home. The trouble with such design decisions is that visual illiterates have no way of knowing whether a design is good or not. And this is why the interiors of most houses look as if they had been put together by the blind. <laughs> In fact, most motel rooms are equally tasteless and mediocre, probably because the management wants the customers to relax in a familiar home-like environment. <laughs> so what, what he was suggesting in the book is that the world is filled with visual pollution and that we were all responsible for this. It turns out that the way George sees it is actually rooted in some scientific evidence uh, that only 40 years later we're starting to discover. I want to unlock some of that for you. A couple of years ago, I began noticing some interesting psychological studies in the news. Um, so here's one. Two professors found that we rent more romance films when it's cold outside. And uh, they believe it's because it's a search for emotional warmth that somehow in our minds we are equating physical warmth and emotional warmth together. Researchers found that momentarily holding a warm cup of coffee caused us to consider others, strangers, warm, friendly people. And the inverse was true as well. One more study for you, this one, University of Amsterdam. So they took uh, two groups and gave them a task. One group uh, was given a clipboard that was lightweight, one was given a clipboard that was heavy. And the group that had the heavy clipboard took the job more seriously than the group with the light clipboard. Uh, somehow, they were equating the heaviness with importance and value. So that weight equaled value. And that uh, tactile sensation actually influenced their decision making. These studies, and a lot more like them, are correlating emotions, our five senses, and language metaphors. And that caught my attention. I mean, I, I had thought of language metaphor as a poetic device. You know, it, it is um, an instrument that we use to describe experiential things. I had never realized that they might be revealing something about human experience or the way we understand the world. Interestingly, during the same decade that George Nelson wrote How to See, there was this debate going on about the origin of language. Noam Chomsky had a student named George Lakoff. The theory at the time was that language is um, inherent in humanity and uh, we generate language from our being. And uh, Lakoff said, I don't know, I, I, I think it's more about generated from our experience and our experience dictates how we create language. But in the end, Lakoff did have enough evidence to prove a theory. And uh, that theory was that human experience creates language and he did it through metaphor. He wrote a book in 1980 called Metaphors We Live By. It shows uh, how visceral experience creates language rather than disembodied reason creating language. And that idea is most elegantly illustrated through language metaphor. So this made me wonder if, if our understanding of metaphor is useful for inspiration for design. I wondered, so I, I asked George Lakoff, I wrote him and I said, hey, I kind of understand your theory like this. I'm thinking about it what metaphor means for design and how we as designers talk about how a design might be strong or warm or uh, busy. Um, do you think there's a connection here and, and is it something interesting? And George wrote back and said, yeah, I think that is. That's a very reasonable uh, connection. Um, so you guys all probably live by Cartesian theory. Cartesian theory is basically the mind and the body are separate. Rational thinking is the kind of thinking that we should all adhere to, and emotional thinking is what we should all reject. In reality, we know we don't live that way at all. We're, we have a very intertwined life. Um, and this Cartesian theory has been with us for a long time now, and I, and I think especially in the business world, we, we struggle with it all the time. And there's very little discussion about the aesthetic value of what you're doing or the arrangement you're giving the world. So I think it's actually ignoring the deep unspoken appeal of design when we, when we just say emotions don't matter.
Brain imaging tools show that when we experience something or we imagine something, the same regions of our mind are being activated. So, for example, if I'm thinking about cold weather or I'm thinking about a callous person, the region of the brain uh, that connects those two words, that cold word together, is connected. And so the implication is that whether you're imagining something or you're taking action, to the brain it's all the same. And I think this is why it matters to design. Uh, it turns out that metaphors, uh, whether visual or spoken, um, are triggering imagination, and they are tools that we as creators can use to make the world better and make experiences better. So there's this field of study called embodied cognition. Another term for it is physical intelligence. The idea that we're understanding with our bodies, that our five senses are giving us the key to unlocking the world. And so um, a number of us at IDEO uh, were confident in these theories and said, let's try to map some of these things out and make tools that we could share um, to either give designers more confidence in their own intuition or uh, to help our clients understand uh, the values that we have. So we made a map, um, and we based them off the five senses. Let's look at fresh. So fresh can be understood via sight and sound. And we can connect freshness with concepts like new and healthy and young. I think you know this is true from your own personal experience. Which apple would you like to eat? I think most of us would choose the healthy one, yeah? We actually used this very slide in a client meeting when we were having trouble getting the client to invest in new manufacturing processes. We showed this to the boardroom. I asked them the same question. They all said they would like to eat the healthy apple as well. From that point, we got them to invest in the new manufacturing equipment. So that was really great, because all I did was show them two apples, right? I didn't have to show any spreadsheets. Um, it was, uh, and it worked. And I want to show you the, the difference in the designs here. So these are two mattresses. But the design in the front, you can see, is much crisper, plumper, fuller than the design in the back, which is what they previously had. Another example, this one also based on fruit, a startup called Axio came to us and said they would like us to help them redesign their hardware design language, uh, their interactions, and their brand. And so we said, okay, your name's Axio, you sound like a, a villain, uh, maybe we should uh, reconsider that since the product was actually helping people understand their brain waves and uh, find focus and flow. Um, be able to track that with a headband, be able to uh, connect that via Bluetooth to your iPhone. Um, so we renamed them Melon. Um, much friendlier, much more approachable. You can start to see how that idea of focus and structure can be built into those beautiful colors from the melon. It's juicy, it's confident and quiet. Another one, we'll look at the root metaphor of old. Old can be positive or negative. I think it's actually a very positive thing. So surviving time, enduring, uh, showing marks, creating a diary. Um, and I think that sounds a lot like your favorite pair of Chuck Taylors, probably. So when we designed the retail flagship store for Converse, we brought those ideas into the store so that the floor would wear a certain way, so that the bleachers would show marks, so that it felt worn in, not worn out. So as it turns out, the way George saw the world is the way we can all see the world. Um, and the way George Lakoff heard it is how we can all hear it. And so we've come full circle, connecting the ideas of two visionaries with the art and science of visual literacy. So my parting thought to you is if anything I said to you today sounds important, it was probably the slides with the heavy font. Thank you. <laughs>